Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'd like to show you some of the new features coming uh, to our brand new newest version of Pixel Mash, which is Pixel Mash 2020. Um, and uh, we've got some really neat new features that have been highly requested for quite some time. And so I'll just jump in and start showing you those. So the first of these uh, is reference layers. And so um, you can see right here, I've got this photo of uh, Monument Valley that I've imported and um, when you first just import an image it will just import it as a normal layer but what you can do is on every layer you can actually whether it be a painted layer or an image layer um, there's a new check mark here which is reference and when you check that it will make it um, a so that the the uh, layer itself does not get pixelized when everything else does and I can also still change its opacity and um, B, it will um, give you the option. If you come up here into view, you can say draw reference images above or draw reference images below. And so that'll put it um, either above everything or behind everything. So if I turn off this sky layer, you can see the reference image is still back there. And so you may find it handy um, either way to have it drawn above or below your images. But so if I have the reference images drawn above, so uh, for example on this, if I want to use this reference to know where to draw the shadows of things, I might set its opacity somewhere like here. But then when I um, go into this layer, uh, if I'm, I'm just using red right here, so it's not gonna be the same. You can see I can paint on this layer while still seeing that reference image um, uh, quite, um, quite transparent over my existing image. So that's a handy thing to use for a number of things. And you can have as many reference layers as you want if you want multiple ones. And uh, you can still just toggle it on and off right here or use that um, tab keyboard shortcut to toggle all of your reference images on or off. So that can be a super handy thing. Um, another feature that actually might be easiest to see if I have this reference image uh, toggled on. Um, well, I'm not sure. Let's turn it back off. Um, is that we've put in color management, which is a big one. Um, and so um, it will default when you first um, install this new version of Pixel Mesh to um, work in sRGB. And you've got these options you can see here. One is no color management, and I don't know if you'll be able to see on the video what's changing when I do this, but the whole interface um, will update, uh, including the document as you change which sort of color management scheme it's working in. sRGB is sort of the main one that most people work in. And um, you can see in here that there's options to work in sRGB or Adobe RGB or no color management, or to just work in whatever your screen's um, color profile is, but then to convert either to sRGB or Adobe RGB on expert. Most people will probably wanna just work in sRGB all the time so that you can you know, um, have a better idea when you're working with colors and, and doing it here, what the final image will look like since most things will, um, will interpret and know how to work with sRGB. Um, one of the options in here is to convert GIFs to sRGB on export. GIFs are in their own category because they don't actually support color profiles. But most things that um, will display and view GIF files assume that GIFs are encoded, their RGB values are encoded as sRGB. And so this is, again, is checked by default and it's probably what you want, but if you want to just encode the actual numerical values that your display is using um, when you're when you're working with GIFs, then you can uncheck that. But um, that is color management, which is a big one. Uh, let me open a new file to show the next thing. Let's go with this guy right here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, you can see I've got this nice gradient in the background of this um, sort of uh, um, sunset moonscape kind of a thing. Um, and this gradient is actually a layer effect. So this layer, if I turn off the layer effect, it's actually just a solid color that I painted it. Um, you can see that on and off. 
And when I apply the layer effect, it uses these values and I can add as many different colors as I want here and it will automatically generate a gradient and we'll use the number of steps so I can turn the gradient down. If I have it down at the lowest, it will be exactly the number of steps <clears throat> that is um, that are of the colors that are shown here. So four colors, four steps, three colors, three steps. But then as I, as I increase this, it will smooth it out. And I can also change the angle. So this will change the angle like this. Um, and let's get it back to perfectly vertical. So anyway, that's a really neat effect and um, is very handy for a lot of things, as you can imagine. Um, and it makes it so that you're not just um, stuck with what you might originally paint, but you can always come back and tweak the colors or, you know, whatever. So that's pretty neat. Um, for the next feature, let's, whoops, let's actually uh, do a new project. Uh, don't save. There's another small new thing is just when you're starting a project you can either choose standard pixel art where it um, will just be a one-to-one -one mapping um, between this width and height and it won't have a high res, higher res layer underneath and dynamic res art lets you do what you're used to in Pixel Mesh if you used it before where you get to choose the scale so that if I'm making a 64 by 64 image Underneath that, the underlying HD resolution will actually be 192 by 192. So we'll just do that. Um, but the feature that I'll show you here, so let's say I've got some layer, and then let's um, make it have a child layer. Let's just name these child, whoops, child and parent. And the child layer, let's make it different and let's just make it like this okay so we've got two layers we've got the child layer which moves independently and we've got the parent layer which will move them both and so if I add an effect so let's say I add a colorize effect to this and let's say that you know I'm coloring it so that everything is you now this blue color previously um, any effect that you applied to a parent would automatically get applied to all of its children now there's this check mark, which is apply effects to children. So if I uncheck that, now this colorize effect and any other effects I do on here will only apply to the parent and not to its children. So if you have a parent layer that has something in it and you want to apply effects just to that parent layer, um, this now makes that possible, which is nice and handy. Um, okay, let's actually, let's make a new layer here to show the next thing, um, which is tiled painting. Now we've always had, or have had for some time, where if I turn on tiling, let's go to the pencil tool for this, and we'll draw in white. Um, oops, don't have a layer selected. Uh, where if you draw in here, then it shows up in all of these quadrants, and it's nice to be able to, to you know, see that. But now I can actually start my painting over in any part of this. And so here, let's switch to uh, red, something different. I can start way over here and just start this line and keep going up through the different tiles and it will just like um, keep continuous. So this makes it much easier to, not that this is great art, but to um, paint tiled continuous images and uh, That'll be very handy for tiled things. Okay, uh, next feature. Blowing through these, I think getting the point across, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> well, let me turn off tiling. All right. All right. So, um, this next feature. So, say you've got a file like this tree where I've heavily used layer effects. And, um, so like if I'm painting in this trunk layer, it doesn't even matter what color I paint with. It will just paint it with this outline and that dithering. And as I, you know, um, then paint in some of these other layers, like this layer is set up for shading and this layer is set up for darker shading. Um, because I've set this tree up this way, uh, it makes it, you know, easy to keep doing things in the same style with that. 
And um, what we've made is a way that you can export um, your whole project as a template. So this export project template, let's just say free templates. What it will do is it will export this with all of the layers and all of their effects, but none of the content in those layers. So now if I open um, that file that I just saved, we called it tree template. You see it's an empty file, but it's got all of these things in it. So now again, if I start painting in the trunk layer, it'll have that trunk styling. And let's just make it kind of look tree trunkish. And then I do my shading. Da -da -da. It's not the greatest tree that Earth has ever seen. And then I do my dark shading. And I do my treetop. And some shading in the treetop. And some dark shading in the treetop. You'll notice these are all also set up to auto clip so that once I paint the outside thing, it's really easy to shade inside of it. Anyway, that's a dumb looking treetop. I hope nobody paid good money for this tree. But um, you can see how the, the layers, when I set that up and I do it as a template, then if you're creating a lot of assets that are sort of using the same layer effects, that can be a really handy thing. And just one more feature that I'll show is just with layer effects in general. Now on any one given layer, so like with this, this um, tree top, it's got this colorize effect, it's got the dither, and it's got the outline. So what I can do is I can save that layer effect just as its own layer effect file. Um, so, so I say, I'm gonna export this as treetop layer effect. And then if I have a new project, don't save that lovely tree. And I have now this new blank layer, and I so I paint you know red into it and just do this blob. Now if I import layer effects, and go to where I saved that treetop layer effect, it will import all of those layer effects onto this layer, and you can see it's painting in that same treetop style layer effect. So. Um, and that can be an easy way to, uh, yeah, just if you find a layer effect that you like and is handy for many situations, um, and save it out and load it in as you like it. Uh, and there are several other smaller features and bug fixes, but those are the biggest ones. And so this is a major release. It's a major new, our first major new version number with Pixel Mash. And we've started naming it after the, the year that it's released. So this is 2020. Point zero, and um, with our new licensing system, how it will work is you buy it and you own it. It's not a subscription or anything, but you get free upgrades automatically for a year from the time that you've purchased it. So um, we'll stop uh, having sort of major version updates where everybody has to buy the new version, and we'll just always be rolling, and we'll always be rolling out. Um, smaller and larger updates throughout the year, but they don't have to be synchronized and timed to a major release. So it's just whenever we finish a new feature, we'll put it out and then everybody who's purchased Pixel Mash in the past year will get that for free. And there's a discount if you've purchased before and want to upgrade to uh, extend your free updates for another year. Anyway, we're excited about uh, that new system and all of these new features. And we hope that you will love this as much as we do. And that you'll use the uh, send feedback option up here to send us your ideas for the next new things to put in. And we've got a lot of great stuff coming. Thanks a lot.